Hi guys and welcome to today's video on the surface area of prisons and the pyramids, building on the videos I have recorded before. My name is Darren Masku and it's really good to see you here today. Now, uh, if uh, you uh, could do me a massive favour and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, I would be deeply, deeply grateful. I'm never going to be rich and I'm certainly never going to be famous, but just knowing that people are watching these videos actually means the world to me. I know it sounds a bit really needy, doesn't it actually, but just clicking that subscribe button, turn off notifications if you don't want to, or actually turn them on because then you find out when I upload all my videos. Deeply, deeply grateful. Over at MathsGuru.com, there are also all of these videos sorted by textbook. They are sorted by the downloadable notes. They have exam style questions uh, and so, so much more coming. And it's absolutely free to go over there and sign up as well. So MathsGuru.com. As I say, this video is dealing with the surface area of um, prisms and pyramids. Now, prisms we've already been dealing with in previous videos. And if you haven't already watched them, head back and have a look. They're some of my finest work. With regards to pyramids, that's relatively new. And we're going to look at the two types of pyramids that we have uh, generally in mathematics. Uh, as a recap uh, in my previous videos, we've looked at the areas of basic shapes. Now, the ones that are shown on the screen behind you or behind me are actually the basic shapes that we've dealt with. And these are the ones that you should put in your summary book or commit to memory if you're not allowed a summary book. And all of the shapes that we deal with in this particular section of the course actually build on this. Composite shapes, our last video basically looked at, well, what happens if you sort of arrange these shapes together? Can we find perimeters and can we find areas? And the answer to that is absolutely yes, we can. Now, something for the bucket list. Years ago, I used to watch National Geographic. My goodness, does not that make me sound sad and lonely? Well, actually, I only used to watch the ones for Egypt because I absolutely, desperately wanted to go to uh, the Great Pyramids. I really could think of nothing better. It just looked amazing. The hieroglyphics, the, just the architecture, the spooky stories of, you know, curses and stuff sounded brilliant to me, he says. Now I'm thinking maybe he needs to see a therapist. But anyway, I really wanted to go there. And uh, yeah, looked into it. But unfortunately, uh, yes, apparently you need to spend an inordinate amount of time on the back of a camel. Now I've done that once when uh, my mum and dad took me to Africa. Uh, yes, I sat on the back of a camel and trust me, it was painful. Those things are not comfortable to ride. And to spend hours trekking across the desert to go and see a pyramid that I could probably just, I don't know, fire up National Geographic made life more interesting. But apparently, do you know that camels spit, you know? I think that's from some sort of Disney uh, cartoon. But anyway, apparently it's not spitting. What has this got to do with maths? Nothing. But it's not spitting. They're actually throwing up on you. Mmm, lovely. So the next time you go to the zoo and you see a camel and they spit at you, apparently it's because you're a bit um, distracting or you're bothering the camel and they're not spitting at you, they're actually vomiting on you. Too much information? I thought so too. So let's go back to the pyramids that we actually deal with in mathematics. And there are two types of pyramids that we deal with. One is called a triangular base pyramid. Why? Well, strangely, because the base of the pyramid is a triangle. So this is why it's called a triangular base pyramid. And we know that for right angles uh, that are in my pyramids, we can find the area of those type of things. So if that was a right angled triangle at the bottom of that pyramid, then we could actually find the area. What about the other th sides? Well, there is a side here that is a triangle. There is a side here is a triangle. And then there is one at the back that's a triangle as well. Now, obviously, finding the area of these things is great if we know what the base shapes are. And I'm going to go back to say, what is Annette? And I'm not going to do the cheesy joke I did the last time with that strange lady called Annette. If I was to actually draw this as a flattened shape, that would be my base. There would be one side. There would be another and there would be another. Now, the, probably the good thing about most of the triangles or the pyramids we're going to do is that this area here and that area there and that area there are generally going to be the same. So working out the area or the surface area of the shape is going to be great because all I need to do is work out the area of the base, work out the area of one side, and then multiply that by three because generally speaking, that pyramid will have three triangles the same. This is called a right square base pyramid because, well, there is a square base. Now, again, it's great because if I was going to draw a net of this, there would be my base, there would be a triangle, a triangle, a triangle, and a triangle. And once again, we could say, find the base, find the area of one of the triangles, and then multiply that by four, because generally speaking, that is going to be, all those triangles are gonna be the same. There is a trick to this, and it is very much about the measurements they give you on this triangle. Now, please remember, this length here is actually called the slant 
height. Okay, so that's called the slant or the, yeah, it's the slant length because that is not the length you need to find the area of a triangle. The height you're going to need is one here and they will generally give you a right angle. So that if you remember from what we had before, this section here and this section here are my base and my height. Very, very important. Okay, so using that, let's just do a recap of the surface area of a prism, uh, just so we can remember. Right, so we got here a cuboid, and we realized that in this particular instance, that shape will have a front, it will have a back, it will have a top, it will have a base, and it will have a side, and it will have another side. And again, I split my shapes up into those six things, add them all together, and I should get my right answer. So I'm gonna deal with the front first, that's great because I know the front has dimensions two by three. So that's going to be two times three, which is going to be six centimeters squared. And working out is critically important. What about the back? Well, the back is the same because it's a prism. So this shape here at the back, also two by three, which is six centimeters and squared. Marvelous. Right, what about the top? Well, there's the top. What are the dimensions of the top? Well, this dimension matches this dimension, so that's three. This dimension matches that dimension, which is five. So this becomes three times five, which is 15 centimeters squared. And likewise, the base is gonna be three times five, which is 15 centimeters squared as well. Again, prism, top and the bottom look exactly the same. Last thing, the side. Here is a side, let's color it in. What is the height of that? It's two. We know that the width of that is five. So that becomes two times five, which is 10 centimeters squared. And two times five, which is 10 centimeter squared. Now, I'm sure there are shorter ways of doing this. I like the methodical approach, because now it doesn't matter what shape they give me, I'm going to be able to do this. So add those two together gives me 12, add those two together gives me 30, add those two together gives me 20, and adding all those together gives me, therefore, my total surface area is equal to 50, 62 centimeters and squared. All right, so looking at each of those faces, working out the areas, adding them together. What about the surface area of a pyramid? As I have said, generally speaking, these things here will all have the same area. So once we found the area of one of them, so once we found the surface area of one of them, which if you remember is half base times height for a triangle, and we find the area of the base, and the base of that is generally gonna be a square, so that's nice and easy, it's base times height, or whatever you want to do, then you add all of those together. And so here's an example of finding the surface area of a pyramid. Oh, right, so what do we need to do? If we remember rightly, now I could, if I want to draw a net here, and there is the net, and what do we know? We know the base is two by two, and we know that the height of one of the triangles is three. The way we told me that was three, and that dotted red line there, that dotted red line is giving me the height, not the slant length. We do not want the slant length. That makes life more complicated, because I'd have to go back and use Pythagoras' theorem to be able to solve these type of questions. Right, so, therefore, we know the area of the base, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put that little square to say the area of the base is equal to two times two, which is four, meters squared. The area of one of the triangles is given by a half times the base, which we know is two, times the height, which is three. Well, a half of two is one. One times that gives me three meters squared. Now, that's not the end of my calculation, because therefore, my total surface area is given by the area of the base plus four lots of the area of one triangle. I've worked out one triangle. I need to work out what four triangles is, so I take the area of one triangle and times it by four. Yes, so that becomes four plus 12, which gives me 16 meters squared. Love this stuff. Why isn't there a formula for this? Doesn't need a formula. You've got all the basic building blocks that you just add together. Gotchas, now we need to be very careful with these type of questions because ultimately they are going to try and trick you. Now surface area, if you remember, is the area outside the shape. Now this here obviously is some sort of composite shape. We can tell that because we've got a cuboid or a cube in fact because it's two by two by two and we have a right or a square base pyramid on the top. So if I was going to find the surface area, just remember that the base of this triangle, sorry, the base of this pyramid, he should say, is not 
part of the service because it's hidden underneath the um, section of the, or because it's sort of joined to that cube, it doesn't make any difference, it's not involved. So I, in this situation, I would actually find the area of four of the triangles and I would find the area of one, two, three, four, five sides of that cube because only five sides are seeing, the front, the back, the side, the side, and the base, right? So the base is still a surface area, uh, and some questions will ignore it, yep. What about the next question? This question here is actually a barn. Oh, yes, it's a barn. It's an example I've seen in exams all the time. How would we work out the surface area of this? Again, split it up. We have a triangle here. We have a triangle here and we have a triangle at the back. So find the area at the front triangle, you find the area at the back. What about this front uh, square here, or a, a, a quadrilateral? Same as that one there. So again, we can find the front area and the back area, that's beautiful. What about the rest? Well, we've got a rectangle here and a rectangle there, so we can find the two sides. What about the base? We can find the area of the base quite simply. And then we got the area of the roof. And a lot of people get confused because of the way that's drawn. But actually, if you think about a roof, if I was looking at that side on, that is also a rectangle. So we've got an area of a rectangle and have an area of a rectangle. So just breaking that up, do each section one at a time, add them all together, I'd be surprised if you actually make any mistakes. And there we go, guys. That is the end of this lesson. Okay, so we dealt with the idea of pyramids and prisms or recap the prisms. You've got this. Thank you very much for watching. I am going to call it a day and head off to another video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't already done so, can you subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, or head over to Math Guru and sign up there? Um, it's really, really good to know that you are watching and that these videos are actually helping people. All right, I'm done. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.